Hello and welcome to the channel Between the Lakes with Mike and Yvonne. This is episode 100 and we thought we'd make it a special and an informative one. In 2017 we bought our house in Torrevieja on the Costa Blanca in Spain. We currently divide our time almost equally, 90 day rule permitting, between our two homes. So how does it compare financially between living in Spain and in the UK? I don't know. Shall we have a look? Yeah, go on then. Go on then. Back in June 2021, we did an episode about our experience buying a house in Torrevieja. It included all the buying costs and expenses. We'll put a link to it in the description. It may help you get a handle on this video as it shows the size, the type and the cost of the property. We've also done episodes on other relevant subjects related to living in Spain. Such as non-resident tax and the 90 day rule. After over six years, we're still here and enjoying the experience. We've made many new friends and met lots of people on the way. We're sure many of you may have wondered about the cost of living difference between the two countries. So we thought it would be good to show you our figures. They may or may not be typical, but they are our actual figures and should give you a good idea of how much we pay for services in both countries. The spreadsheets detail all our running costs and expenses from when we moved in in April 2017 to the present day. Right, so what we're looking at here is a spreadsheet um, of our last six and a half years of living expenses in our house in Torrevieja. And uh, as you can see there, we've got the, the years here, and that's 2017, 2018, 2019, 20, 21, 22, and half of 23. So looking across the top there, we've got the council tax and rubbish, which are together. Um, we moved in, by the way, in April. So this is not a full year in 2017. It's April to December. The Spanish tax year is January to December. Um, not like UK where it's April to April. So the tax year is from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. The f our first full year from 2018, you can see we've got a full year there, which is probably a better illustration of our costs. So if we look at that, and we look across the top, council tax and rubbish are together. You've two payments of um, the rubbish, which comes in April and September. The main council tax bill, known as the SUMA, it's all SUMA, um, is 150.34. And then electric is, um, we get that every month. We get a bill every month. Um, and water is every quarter. Um, internet we didn't get until... February 2019 and uh, we started with uh, Connect Fibre which is a great company 20 euros a month and um, bank charges started off at 30 euros a quarter their quarterly charges uh, they've now gone up to 40 if we look down here at the, la the latest ones it's now 40 euros a quarter so it's gone up 25 percent since 2017 and the bank charges in Spain are very hefty you know, it's not like the UK where you get free banking and then you get cash back and all sorts of little offers. And more about that later because uh, I am going to change my bank account from Sabadell, which we're with now, to um, a bank called TransferWise. I'm sure some of you have, will have heard of it. So uh, moving on, community fees, we pay that twice a year. And that's for our upkeep of our pool, uh, maintenance of the pool and the gardens and um, street cleaning. We just pay two payments of 87.30, it comes to 174.60, which is very, very reasonable for a, you know, our, our urbanisation. Um, we've got house insurance with MapFree. Oh, we did then, we've changed it now to um, uh, Ibex insurance at 171 as opposed to 192, which is what the last bill was in uh, 2022. So, um, yeah, that's that. And then... Uh, Tax, if you've got a property in Spain, you've got to pay non-resident tax. If you're not a resident, of course. If you're a resident, it's different again. But uh, if you're a non-resident, like we are, um, following the 90 days and what have you. But if, you're, if you're there for less than 193 days, you're a non-resident taxpayer. 
if you own property, you, you're a non-resident taxpayer and everybody pays this has got property. Uh, we've done a video about it and it tells you all about it uh, on that video. I'll put a link to it in the description and uh, and do watch it if you're thinking of buying a property and to, so you, you're well clued up on what's going on. Now, when we first started paying it, um, our solicitor did it, everything for us, filled out the form, uh, the 210 form, which is a tax form, and, and that applies to people that rent the properties out as well as people that don't re rent the properties out, they just live there and have them. Uh, you know, it's nothing to do with renting your property. If you own a property, you pay non-resident tax um, and you fill out the form or the solicitor fills it out for you or, or some other fiscal representative that you might have. Uh, and they usually charge a fee. Our solicitor was charged the 60 euros each because you fill out two forms. So that's 120 euros. And we paid that in 2018, 2019 and 2020. And then you'll notice in 2021, we didn't pay it because by that time we thought, well, we'll fill the form out ourselves. Right, so there we are. Um, and you can see the totals there. Uh, so if we look there, at uh, it's probably fair to look at 2018 onwards because it's a full year. So 2018, the house cost us 1,484.65. Uh, and then it was 16. Uh, these totals here, then 1664 and so on. That's 16 again. So it, it's not changed that much. And uh, the last year obviously is not complete. And we are changing from... Sabadell to transfer wise uh, because we're a little bit fed up we're paying 160 euros a year 40 euros a quarter and for that reason um, I've been slowly last time our last visit I was slowly transferring all our direct debits to transfer wise which I've now completed and uh, I'm ready to go back and, and, and hopefully that'll be the last 40 euros we'll be paying to Sabadell Bank because uh, I'll be uh, I'll be closing the account Let's look now, let's concentrate on a particular year, the latest year. I'm going to use the latest year to look at in detail the difference between this and our UK bills. So let's bring up another spreadsheet. So the comparison we're going to do is the year 2022 because it's the last year where we've got all the information from both the UK and Spain. So here we are, we've got the UK on the top here and all the sp Spanish figures underneath um, and we've, I've tried to make them as uh, like for like as possible there's some things that are not the same like uh, TV license is not in Spain and community fees are not in the UK so um, but I've, I've tried to align them up so that you can see the differences so let's let's look at the council tax so in 2022 um, the council tax we're paying round about uh, 120 pounds a month 111 a month or whatever um, but the total bill came to uh, 13.54.25. Um, in Spain, council tax and the rubbish together. The rubbish, you get the bill separately. Uh, one in May, one in October. And then the main council tax bill, or the SUMA as it's called in, in Spain. And the total of those two together is 189.22. Uh, compared to 1,354.25. So a huge saving there on uh, on the council tax. Or summer. And then we've got the electric, uh, total electric bill for the year. We're with Octopus Energy and we pay monthly. And it's, it's sort of not an estimated, but a, a good guide um, what it rounds to in the 12 months. And it's about right, I think, is that 7618. That includes the gas and the electric. So that's 91416 a year. Obviously, it's a bit less than the average, I would say, because um, bearing in mind that we're away for maybe two sets of 90 days maximum so not last year but um, it could be that we go away for two lots of 90 days so that would make a big difference to the uh, the amount of power that we use and the gas and the electric in spain our total bills come to 314.11 um, and again we're not there all year round so we have a standing charge which is between 16 and 20 euros a month um, when it's up a little bit, that's when we're there. So we've got one there at uh, 35, 27, 30, 24, 25, 40. So um, May is probably the biggest one because we go in April when it's at its coldest um, and we do have a little bit of heating on and we probably stop it a bit more. So uh, that, that would be a, a dear a month. 
But having said that, you know, the total energy bills are 314.11 as opposed to the UK at 914.16. Uh, similarly with the water, we've, we're paying 326.69 for the water bills between 27.50 and 26 pounds. Um, in Spain, we've got um, 157.52 euros for the whole year, which is again way below half of uh, what it is in the UK. Um, internet um, 293.53 we're with Virgin Media just a very basic package we don't have TV we don't have um, telephone lines we just have the basic internet and uh, in Spain we've got uh, Connect Fibre very good company never goes wrong never have a problem with it the speed's not as fast but it, I can always watch TV on it it never lets me down and we pay 240 a year 240 euros a year as opposed to two hundred ninety three fifty three pounds. Bear in mind, of course, that the in the um, euro exchange rate is about one sixteen one seventeen at the moment. So, one euro is about eighty five eighty six pence, maybe a little bit less. So these prices not only are they a lot cheaper, but the they're in euros as opposed to pounds. House insurance one hundred thirteen twelve in the UK, one hundred ninety two oh nine in Spain. Mobile phone. Uh, 14 pounds we have two contracts seven pounds each uh, total bill there 168 for uh, the uk for our phones in spain it's it's a little cheaper because we only have one phone uh, we've got a lobster card uh, which costs us 12.99 a month so we might have six payments a year of that you can park the card so you can uh, when you go there you put the card in and unpack it with the company which means that you can start paying it, it'll just freeze the card wherever you are if you're 14 days in you will freeze it um, and then unfreeze it when you go back and you can do that with a 12 months gap any more than that and I think you've got to start again but it's a brilliant system and it's perfect for us and we can do our live broadcasts on it our live videos probably do one a day a one five minute live video a day and we still have enough data to do it Right, next is um, TV licence. We've started freezing our TV licence as well. When we go away, we ring them up and say we're going away and we cancel the TV licence and then we reinstate it when we get back so we're only paying for when we're here. That saves us, you know, 50% of the cost of the TV licence, roundabout. Um, community fees in Spain, um, that's for our uh, lighting, our swimming pool, maintenance of the gardens, street cleaning and that type of thing. And that's 17460 Bank charges in the UK forty eight pounds, but we get the we've got a one two three Santander account. That's good for uh, cash back. You get the cash back and the interest, a little bit of interest. So it works out roundabout free banking. We're actually ninety two pence up on the deal there, as you can see. You know we don't pay any charges, bank charges, which is brilliant. In Spain, um, they're very expensive the bank charges, and um, we're paying forty euros a quarter. So that's 160 euros we pay a year and um, we are doing something about that next year we won't be using uh, Sabadell Bank we'll be using uh, TransferWise and this past few months I've been transferring all these items the council tax the rubbish the electric the water the internet uh, house insurance mobile phone and community fee that they're all on direct debit with TransferWise now the only reason I haven't cancelled it, uh, Sabadell, or closed the Sabadell account, is I just want to make sure that all the direct debits go through, and I won't know that until um, October. So I'm going to wait until October, and then I will I'll close my Sabadell account. The, the Modelo 210 form is the form you fill in to pay your non-resident tax. We used to have to pay for that to the solicitor, €60 Euros each, um, but now we do it ourselves, so we save that €120, Euros and uh, we just pay the price of the tax which is 17580 we've done a full video about this so if you look back i'll put a description in below so rounding it up now and looking at the bottom line you can see that um, all the totals there we've got 3244.83 for all our living expenses in the uk excluding food of course food is uh, we're going to talk about that later and in spain it's uh, 1681 and 28 euros so for us our house running costs in spain are less than half the amount of what we pay in the uk having said that we are running two properties in two countries 
and it would be obviously more economical to have just one. And we're often asked, why not move to Spain permanently? We love both countries and we want to spend time with our family in the UK. We enjoy having the option of being able to move between the two countries, 90 day rule permitting, and look forward to going to both. There is of course food to buy on top of paying for house costs, so let's see how our shopping bills compare in the two countries. To do this we did a price comparison between Spain's popular Mercadona supermarket and UK's Tesco's. We tried to keep the items as like for like as we could. What we're looking at here is a supermarket price comparison between UK and Spain. We did it on June the 28th, um, so it's, it's June the 28th today and uh, all these prices are as of today, uh, just to be uh, clear on that. Just like all the other things we've done in the video so far have been based around June uh, 2023. So what we're looking at here is a spreadsheet and it's got um, the items are down here on the left. It's got uh, any discrepancies between the two comparisons are in these columns here. So we've got Tesco's and we've got Mercadona. So Mercadona in Spain, we're a budget supermarket supplier in Spain and as, as our Tesco's in the UK are a budget supermarket. Um, so we thought they're the, probably the fairest, do you think? Mm to do the test on. Yeah. So we've looked at some everyday items, starting off with a, a loaf of wholemeal bread, an 800 gram loaf. So if you bought that in Tesco's today, it would cost you 75 pence. And uh, we got these prices off the um, Mercadona website, so these are up to date as well. So it's 125 for that same loaf in Mercadona. Now we are in euros in Mercadona and we're in pounds in Tesco's. We're going to do a conversion at the end so you can see what the saving and what the comparison and what the difference is. So there we are. Is that a surprise that we've got uh, 125 euros for a, the same loaf that we can get in Tesco's at 75? That's more expensive instead yeah. of bread. So um, some of these things are quite surprising. Um, let's look at some milk. Pasteurised milk um, is 125 in Tesco's. And it's one euro and four cents in Mercadona. So cheaper in Mercadona. Um, milk has gone up a bit in Tesco's. It did go up quite a bit. It has dropped down a little bit. Mm. But it's still more it's expensive. still expensive. Mm. Uh, then we've got UHT milk. We don't buy UHT milk, but as an example, um, Tesco's 69, Mercadona 90 cents. So 69 pence versus 90 cents. Again, that's strange because it's cheaper in Tesco's than it is in Mercadona. And that is for a, a one litre carton. Um, carton. Eggs, if you can find them. Um, at the moment, eggs are a bit in short supply. They have been for a while, but uh, I think they're coming back in now. It's a bit easier to find eggs. You can easily find the free range eggs, um, but it's the, the cheaper ones that I normally buy, which yeah. seem to sell out very quickly. Yeah, I wonder why that is. There's obviously a shortage of eggs at the moment. For whatever reason. Yeah. Um, well, there were like the chicken flu, what they call it. That, uh, bird uh, flu. Bird flu. So I think that was a big problem. Yeah. A flu off with all the eggs. So. <laughs> <laughs> but they are more expensive here than in yeah. Spain. Now, here's a surprise to me. Heinz baked beans. You know, we, we go to Spain, we, we go shopping for beans. We don't necessarily buy Heinz baked beans, do we? If we see them and the decent price, we'll buy them. Well, we have but, done. Uh, we, we used to buy them. Um, they were less than a euro in Spain, uh, but they've always been a dear tin of beans here, and I usually buy the branded, like, unbranded, brand, br the Tesco Zone yeah. or whatever supermarket I'm in, yeah. which are a lot cheaper. You can get them for like twenty eight pence or something. Yeah. Well, this test today, um, one pound forty in Tesco's for four hundred fifteen gram tin of beans. Heinz beans. Heinz beans. And in Mercadona, it's one euro fifty, one and a half euros. So in actual fact, it's cheaper in Merc Mercadona than it is in Tesco's at the moment. So that was a surprise to me because mm -hmm. normally it's, they're really expensive, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so there we are. That's another eye opener. Um, I've got yogurts and cheese there. Uh, cornflakes, unbranded cornflakes, another surprise to me. 70 pence for unbranded cornflakes for a 500 gram pack 500 gram pack in Mercadona 1 euro 50 
which is quite a big that's difference. Quite a big difference, mm. yeah. So that's more in Mercadona, another more. Um, potatoes, a kilo of potatoes, 167 um, in Tesco's and 180 euros in Mercadona. Fairly similar, I would say that's just about about the same, I would say, you know. Um, and then sliced ham, uh, chicken breast fillets, they're about the same. Tin tuna is an under surprise. It seems to be cheaper in Tesco's. Nine eighty for a a key. A, is it a one kilo? Well, it's that you get them in tins, but doing it by the kilo price right. per per kilo. Yeah. That's what those prices are. Okay, so nine eighty at Tesco's and twelve fifty in Mercadona. Yeah, a lot the, more expensive in Mercadona. Not in, uh, and it, they're both in sunflower oil. It's not as though we've got a really expensive olive oil and, and, a, and a sunflower oil. They're both in sunflower oil, so it's a direct comparison. Um, who knows? Uh, but uh, that's that's the case today. Uh, frozen peas kilo, one thirty five pounds versus one thirty five uh, euros at Mercadona. So it's slightly cheap. Well, it's the same price, but in euros we've got a, a, a difference in the exchange rate of about 17%, I would think, at the moment, 16%. Uh, instant coffee about the same toilet rolls a little bit more in the UK diet coke another surprise to me it's cheaper in the UK than it is in Spain for a diet coke 10 cans um, 469 and 693 in Mercadona not quite sure maybe the um, I don't know I mean there's no tax on Diet Coke, I don't think in UK. So, whereas you've got tax on the all the wines and the spirits, which make those the, the big difference in price between Spain and UK. For example, Hardy's Merlot at six pounds now, roughly. Maybe Tesco's Club Card, you can get it at five fifteen or something. So, certain times they do that. At certain it's times. It's not at the moment. Right, it's not enough at the moment as of today. No. Um, and then you can get a lovely bottle of uh, Governor. Your yeah, favourite. favourite. To eighty five euros, uh, and it's beautiful for a nice uh, seven fifty bottle. Uh, Blossom Hill, another one. Just two comparisons on red wine. A Blossom Hill Merlot, five pounds in Tesco's, two forty for a Uvas Merlot, which is another favourite. And um, and then some some Chardonnay, six pounds in UK, two twenty five in Spain. Blossom Hill. Uh, five pounds two thirty five in Spain. So quite a massive difference there of the uh, prices. And uh, our favourite beer, San Miguel, twelve three thirty bottles at ten ninety nine in the UK and only five seventy six in Spain. And a bottle of gin, unbranded gin, eleven seventy five in the UK and only six twenty five in Spain, which is that's gone up quite a bit. Um, I remember that when that were four fifty. It's not that long ago. You could get a, a bottle of um seventy CL bottle of unbranded gin for four fifty, it's now six twenty five, but it's still very cheap. And then you worked out the prices, didn't you, for um Yeah, I convert converted. converted the Euros into pounds, uh today's rate the equivalent of. So seventy three seventy eight euros was sixty three sixty three. I think that's about one point one six at the moment. Yeah, it's sort of fluctuating, one sixteen, one seventeen. Yeah, so that's worked out on today's rate, on the 28th of June. And um, there's a difference between the two shopping baskets. Uh, more expensive in the UK by... £26.12p. Mm. So, there we go. But most of that saving is on the alcohol. Yeah, it is. If you don't drink alcohol, then um, your bills aren't going to be too much different really I don't think when when you because a lot of the things are the same there's some surprising things that are not the same um, which did surprise me I like the cornflakes and but generally speaking um, Spain is probably a tad cheaper than it is in the UK but not as much as you think on the shopping no. except the beers and some food stuffs are cheaper so there we go mm, there you go well, we hope this has given you an idea of the differences between living in the two countries. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Uh, this is our 100th video, as we said earlier on. 
Uh, we've done 21 charts as well this year and we've done 18 lives. If you like the lives, um, let us know in the comments below and we'll carry on doing them. So thanks for staying with us and for your support. And thanks to all those that have brought us a coffee or a super thanks. Whee! And on that note, it's time to wrap the video up. So, it's a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. A thumbs down if you haven't enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. Three, Three two, two, one. Bing! Adios! Bing.